Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed experimenting with that applet. You come up with a conjecture about what you think happens if we multiply a function by k, what that will do to its derivative. Let's see if what we get using the limit definition is what you thought it should be. So our function g of x is kf of x. So when I do g of x plus h, that means k times f of x plus h, right? Because whatever I put in for this x, if I replace it by x plus h, I replace that by x plus h. g of x is just k, f of x. So similarly to what we did with the sum rule, you might see hidden inside of here something that you already recognize, namely the expression for f prime of x. The problem is that there are these k's in there. However, k is a constant. So suppose k were, say, 5. As h changes, does k being 5 change? No. 5 is always 5. 5 doesn't care what h is doing. So whether you multiply by 5 on the inside of this function, or on the inside of this limit, or on the outside of the limit, you should get the same answer. Again, this is a limit property which I hope seems reasonable to you. If you want to see a formal proof of it, you have to look at the graduate credit stuff. But we can pull this constant k out front of this limit as h goes to 0. Because whether I multiply by 5 on the inside or the outside, it's not affected by h going to 0. And now there we have something that we recognize, because this is f prime of x. So is that the uh, rule that you conjectured by playing with the applet? That, for example, if you take a function and you multiply it by 3, we know from the first week that that stretches the graph vertically by a factor of 3, but doesn't do anything horizontally. So when you're computing a slope and you're computing delta y over delta x, the delta x hasn't changed. Nothing has changed horizontally, but the delta y is now 3 times as big as it used to be because of your stretching. So what should that do? If you used to have delta y over delta x, and now you have 3 delta y over, over delta x, that means your slope is 3 times as big as it used to be. And that's what this is saying. It's saying that if you already know the derivative of f is f prime, and now you look at 3 times f, the derivative will be 3 times the f prime that you already had. So to summarize that, our constant multiple rule, the derivative of k f of x is k times f prime of x. By the way, we're going to put all these rules to practice shortly. We just need one more rule uh, before we can start playing around with them. So this is our constant multiple rule. Now we'd like to come up with a rule for a specific family of functions. So you can think about what would be a natural specific family of functions to do first based on the ones that we've done using the limit definition that we know work, you might come to the correct conclusion that it would be wise to look at power functions. So we'd like to find a rule for the derivative of x to the m. In class, we did x squared. On the homework, you did x cubed. In class, we did something with a square root. We've done a variety of these. So if we had this rule, and the first three rules that we just came up up there, namely the constant rule, the sum rule, and the constant multiple rule, that means that I can combine powers of x, x squared, x to the seventh, x to the twenty-third, combine them and add them together, and that will allow us to take the derivative of any polynomial. And so before we get to this rule, we have an applet for you to experiment with to see what you think should happen when you take the derivative of a polynomial. So in this applet, you're going to start with a polynomial of a given degree n, and then it will graph you the derivative, the derivative of that polynomial. And you should try to think about what the, what the degree of that derivative is and try to make a conjecture. If you start with a polynomial of degree n, then its derivative should be a polynomial of degree, that's what we want you to figure out. 